Hey everyone, welcome to Tech Down Over. I'm Rick Zanotti and I'm joined today by my good friend from Down Under, where it's smoky, very smoky. Jeff Lanchard. How are you, Jeff? Good, thank you. Very hot as well it has been down here. Oh, so. we got back to hot again? Very hot night, yes. Over mm. 105 yesterday. Whoa. Today, so. 105. Oh, and with smoke, do you still have smoke? No, no. The, all the fires here are still about four or five hours drive away from oh, us. Oh, good, so. good. Quite away but yeah looks hasn't been down. well we're actually we're actually warm again tomorrow we're going to be 80 degrees which is and today was supposed to be 80 so that's kind of nice since we've been in the 30s and 40s in the mornings so yeah dave well, dave, dave moves out here and he gets cold weather now i don't know it's just wrong hey we got we got <laughs> with really us nice dave today, like yeah we got dave mays with us today something. and harold's also on board and here we go This show is sponsored by Relate Corporation at www.relate.com, your training and video partner. Hello, I'm Peter Baker. Please visit voiceovermasterclass.com to see details of the training courses I have on offer for new and existing voice talents to further their career by enhancing voice and technical skills as well as essential marketing tips. And we are back and there in that upper left position of power. We've got Dave Mays, also the Hi. artist known as Altizer in the old days. But how are you doing, Dave? <laughs> how many times do I got to be on your show as Dave Mays before you uh, before we remember used to that one? Oh, 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 we got kept saying <laughs> Dave Altizer. No, no, Dave Mays. No, wait, Dave Alt. Ah! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, yeah, form the wait. artist formerly known. As, the, so we uh, finally said the artist formerly known as Altizer. Uh, Thanks for having me. Oh, it's always a pleasure. And, and Harold's joining us at the top over there. He's running the show and he's co-hosting with us as well. I well, have. Dave, you've been controversial lately. You, oh, you yeah? had me on How the so? edge of my seat going, did he just say that? Wow. <laughs> and then you were followed by Tony, Tony and Chelsea. Tony says, I'm moving was, over yes. to the EOS R. I went, what? Huh? Tony? And you? And I did too. <laughs> Um, <laughs> it's so funny because I just I, I sold mine about I don't know five months ago and I rebought it at Christmas. I got really liked. I kind of missed the camera. The sale that sale it was, was a great sale. It was fifteen hundred bucks. I actually paid less than what I sold it for used. So yep. I was pretty happy. Um, but Same. so so what made you go to the to the EOS? You know, a lot of people are going back to Canon. It's rather interesting. I, I kept going. Is Canon paying us? No, they're not going to pay me any. <laughs> but um, so, so what what happened to you that made you decide this is a good way to go? Well, I'll tell you what. It's really more out of collaborating with other shooters that mm. really got me back into the uh, Canon ecosystem. Uh, for example, I've got uh, shooters now mm -hmm. that are working with with me with Kinetica, and just the reliability of the autofocus, the color science, and honestly, yeah. Jake, the guy that's working <laughs> with me, he owns an EOS R already. Yeah. Um, so I wanted to just kind of match all of our cameras. You know, he's very comfortable with the system. Uh, I was pretty pleased with the 10 bit 4K coming mm -hmm. out of it for my main kind of A roll shots. Um, so I'm using the Atomos Ninja 5 with the uh, EOS R. And I did some yep. tests with the uh, new Speed Booster. It's an RF to EF uh, speed booster from Metabones. They actually and came that, out with a new one? That hmm. system really uh, kind of upgraded the camera to me <clears throat> uh, quite a bit because now it's almost uh, full frame. It's not quite there still, right. but it's not as bad of a crop anymore. It's like a, I think a 1.2 or 1.3 well, crop at all. now with the speed booster in nice. 4K. How's yeah, the speed, so How's the speed so, on it? Uh, now you're doing video. Is, Are you is, doing video has been working for, for me and uh, yeah. Are you doing video with the Metabones? Yes, yeah. That's and the. Is that's it keeping up? Is, uh, it's only for video. You can't really use it for oh. photos because it's uh, interesting. A speed booster on a full frame camera, so it's yep. You know, if you put a full frame lens on it, it yeah. you're going to get vignetting. Mm. So, so it works so. well with the video now. You're not getting any slowness or, or lack of focusing because I know I had the original. I had two of the Metabones, and the last one broke on us. And we're like, we could nobody repairs them. Metabones won't repair it. It's like, damn. Oh, really? Yeah. 
Um, yeah, it's sort of <laughs> That's a, pain. a good, uh, good, good note. I'll keep that in mind. <laughs> yeah, just be careful. I'll take good care of it. You know what broke is yeah, the I spring have... mechanism where you can put a lens on it. We can't get lenses on it anymore. It's like, what? Oh, really? And we're scared yeah, if we I... go into it, we'll break it. No, I haven't. Yeah, I haven't had any of those issues. But uh, as far as the autofocus goes, it's just as good as the Canon adapter. Oh, I think good. part of it has to do with the fact that it's Canon to Canon. Mm. You know, it's RF to EF. Yeah. So it might just be ones and zeros communicating between the body and the lens yep. anyways. So I don't think there's too much uh, complication there. It's when you're putting a Canon lens on a Sony body that mm. you have issues because you've yep. got two completely different manufacturers using different codes and, you know, computer algorithms and whatnot for their autofocus system. So uh, the fact that it's EF to RF means that it, it does work just the same as if you use use the normal EF adapter from Canon. So mm. the only, you know, difference is I now get a speed booster for specifically the 4K mode, um, which nice. kind of fixes that crop. The crop is normally 1.8x on a full-frame mm -hmm. body, yeah. which is almost micro four-thirds. In fact, the uh, the GH5S is a 1.8x crop. So is the, it that much the, the ESR no. 4K <laughs> mode is the same as the GH5S, basically. Interesting. Yeah, interesting. Uh, I'm on a GH5S right now. That's what's nice. shooting me. Um, you know, they make good studio cameras. We have a GH5 on Harold. This one's got the GH5S. I'm not sure if yep. what Jeff's on. Are you on your GH5? No, I should have should have gone and changed it and put the GH5 on so we could have all have had the GH5. You see, Interesting. So. It, they make good <laughs> studio cams for the money right now, and they get, they're coming out pretty cheap. They're not bad. Even the G9 acted as a really good studio camera, and yeah. it doesn't go off. It just runs forever. We had it running for a whole day to see if it would turn off. It didn't. It actually looked pretty wow. good. Um, but, and we had to do a little tweaking on the GH5S to get it to be sharp because it would, the focus and sharpness kind of got tweaked. And then, well, the focus, we had to, we did it the opposite. We thought we had to, uh, slow, slow it, uh, speed it up to focus. What, what did we do? Slow it down to speed it up. Um, what did we have to do? It was a little, it was, it was we're having trouble remembering because it was kind of counterintuitive. Yeah. I think what we had to, um, increase the focus sensitivity to make it so that it wasn't losing focus as often, which we thought was a little weird because it seemed kind of counterintuitive. And we also had to <laughs> increase the focus, uh, the, the the speed at which speed. it changes focus. Yeah, we thought if we sped it up, it would be kind of jumping like a rabbit. No, it actually stays longer on you. So it's sort of interesting. Um, but it works, and it's pretty sharp. Okay. And the GH5, same thing. It just We did a couple of tweaks, and I, you know the focus is almost perfect. You know, they've come they've come a long way from what it used to be and yeah you know definitely. before you'd be sitting there just you haven't moved for 10 minutes and it's going dong, 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 dong. Yeah. it's like hello come back please uh, so it's gotten better um i still think the s1 r the s1 h uh, i don't know I, I i can't bring myself to buy one of those for that kind of money to get the same focus with the same issues it's sort of like eh, no I, I, you, I well, think can you we talk about the yeah. uh, X-T4 rumors from Fujifilm, I mean, yeah. that's going to be real exciting. You think? 6K at 60 frames per second, 10-bit, mm. anamorphic modes, flip-out selfie screen, IBIS, uh, phase-detect autofocus with you know better algorithms than the X-T3. Mm. Uh, there's two card slots in the X-T3, so uh -huh. I assume there's going to be two in this. It's a okay. beefier, bigger battery grip, so we're going to have a new battery. Uh, and Fuji Color Science is fabulous. It's a great, it great it system, and uh, they've got some great lenses. And even the cinema lenses, they got the uh, Fujinon 18 to 55 mm -hmm. with electronic uh, connection, so that'll sync with your IBIS on the camera. And uh, oh. yeah, pretty. Ex I'm, I'm excited. Now, now, hold on there, Dave. I'll, I'll check you on that one, and I'll raise you <laughs> another camera. And that's not out yet, okay. but from what I've been reading, I watched Michael the Maven the other day, and he talked about canon rumors the new uh -huh. canon eos r5 i know the canon I eos that, yeah. r5 8K, 45 megapixels 8k they kind of think it's 8k it seems too high they don't even have that on the 1dx or on the on the cinema yeah. cameras really so i doubt they would do it on you never know but um i mean this is a company of cripples thing so it's kind of hard to believe they would give you that much 
But well, uh, it was. Let's see. It's too hard. Tw- it's uh, it's too good to be true. But mm-hmm. I saw a press release that Canon put out today. I think it might be on Canon Rumors, mm. where some kind of higher up Canon executive actually kind of addressed the fact that they're so behind mm. and they're going to really be putting, you know as much effort and energy into dominating the mirrorless uh, oh, market they, by yeah. putting things in it that they've never dreamed of putting in there. So the, huh. I, I was thinking it was all too good to be true until I read that article. It was kind of a promising, like at least they're uh, kind of aware that they got to play catch up now. Oh, they're embarrassed. They, they're the butt of all yeah. the jokes. I mean, they really blew it. They're still, by the way, they're still bigger than all the other companies combined. In, in camera sales, yeah, it's ridiculous, they beat, right? <laughs> in all cameras, total everybody. They're so bigger. I mean, that's how big they yeah. are, and they have good stuff. It's just that you know they they don't put what they could. They cripple everything. A- another thing, Michael yeah. the Maven was talking about, which I found interesting. He says, "Oh wow, he was playing with the one D. I guess he had a a, a a trial or something of it, but the one D X Mark III. He was saying this is probably one of the best video cameras ever made." He goes, you know, you know <laughs> yeah. it's a, it's one of the best mirrorless cameras. He goes, once you bring the mirrors up, it has so much video power. I was going, that's interesting. So that makes sense because, you know, when everybody says mirrorless, well, Canon's been mirrorless for a long time every time you went into live view. So, yeah. You know, not that I saw much one at, uh, I got to play with one at CES. I went to CES this mm. year. Did you guys go to CES? No. How'd it go? It was fun, you know, it's just, if you've ever been, it's the same old thing where there's yeah. like a million people yep. and <laughs> a bunch of massage chairs, which is fun. But um, <laughs> other than that, uh, there was a couple of camera-related news things there. The only thing that I cared about was really getting some hands-on with the 1DX3. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, it's, it's you know, just as beefy as the old one. I have a 1DC right here. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's the same nice. kind of body. Yeah. Um, let's listen to that. That's fun. That's um, music. That's music. But yeah, it's <laughs> it's beautiful, right? Um, I, by the way, I'm on my laptop. I'm not on a GH5 like these other guys here. This is my ah, laptop, 720p okay. uh, FaceTime camera. Okay. So that's why it looks terrible. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the the video features are amazing. There's a couple of weird uh, quirks with it. It's it's a very massive kind mm. of uncompressed raw. So unless yeah. you're doing a huge production and you've got a ton of card space and you're, you're ready to go, I don't think I would ever shoot raw video on it. Um, the 4K 10-bit option is probably what I would use. Mm-hmm. And they're saying there's no crop and you get autofocus all the way through the whole thing. Um, nice. Except for when you shoot 4K 60, I think. It's kind of confusing. Um so they do turn the autofocus on and off depending on what mode you're in. Yeah. But for the most part, it's workable. And uh, yeah, it's a fascinating camera. Okay. I still don't think I would go back to DSLR, though. I'm so in the kind of mirrorless yeah. world, you know? Now, did it feel like your 1DC? Was it similar in feel? and? It's exa- yeah, it's the exact same. It's oh, literally nothing has changed except for... You know, this is an older body. The One DX Two has the little switch here on the on the top, and uh, mm. you know, I think they added this interesting little touch, little AF button here on the mm-hmm. side that is yeah. touch enabled, uh, so you can do some interesting things with that. You know, these are made for for the Olympics. You know, these come out every yeah. time the Olympics happen. So. Yeah. This camera is made for sports and uh, journalists, and you know you're going to see 1DX3s everywhere, documenting politics and uh, hmm. you know all that kind of stuff. So that's still the majority of the people buying these cameras, and, yeah. and uh, it's just interesting that they did throw these big video features in there. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so at least it's a good step in the right direction, right? With uh, with Canon. So the the touch enabled, so the touch enabled the AF on button. What what does it let you do with it? Like is it does it have a directional thing, or is it just uh, they have a touch and a push function for the button? Yeah, so you can still use it like a normal AF button, um, but as you kind of graze your thumb over the top here, it it's touch enabled, so it, it's like a more advanced uh, joystick. Mm. It's uh, you can you can kind of move faster than you would with a joystick here. Um, right. I think it's a little redundant because right down here is the joystick and then right up here is that new thing. So it's kind of interesting. But I think if you're a video shooter, it's fascinating because you could just have it on a tripod and just kind of maybe graze it here. But I guess you would just touch the screen, right, if you're using video. So hmm. I don't I don't know why it's there. I, don't, I guess it's cool. Um, I, would dec- I would recommend checking out um, the DP review video. I think uh, 
they did Chris Nichols had a good example showing mm. how to use it for photos and stuff. It's really a photography feature. There's yeah. not really a huge reason to use it for video, I don't think. It just reminds me of the EOS RS multifunction bar. I just I feel like Canon's they're trying to fi- <laughs> they're trying to experiment and figure out what the best <laughs> way to work in touch controls, uh, you know, yeah. outside of just the screen is. Well, have you tried yeah, the, like the, the Mac with? The did touch you ever try strip on my laptop? I, hate I was it. just gonna ask. You have that one, right? <laughs> on your MacBook? Yeah, I've got the 16 inch. Do you yeah, like that? Do you right like now, that actually. touch bar? I haven't tried it. The, it just seemed. Hmm. How does that work? It's a. Uh, I mean, it's fine. It's it's. Uh, I use it occasionally, but I think the way Apple wanted to use it is, you know, to have Photoshop color panels and things on it and you could use it for different things but I, I rarely look at it and the only time I ever click it is when like I'm getting a call through FaceTime I could just hit answer you know oh, it's okay. nice but <laughs> I just wish that Apple would allow me to touch my screen that'd be I don't know I'm, that would be I'm cool a, yeah I think it'd be nice to have hey, I'm a little bit shocked that Mac. with what you pay for that that's a nice notebook and they didn't put a, tw- a 1080 webcam on it you'd think by now they would know look it's awful look at that <laughs> it's not that bad but i mean it looks okay but it, i'm just surprised they didn't go higher resolution eh, they're weird it's just odd it's t- uh, tim cook that's his job he, he finds uh <laughs> ways to yeah. save as much money as possible oh gosh no just i'm wondering using the same components hey jeff on the imac the 5k that we both have does that have a 1080 or is it 720 also it's a 1080. I'm sure it is, it is 1080. Uh, oh, yeah. That's weird because that that little MacBook has so much power, and they didn't give it a 1080. Eh. Yeah, well, the thing is, I've been looking at that MacBook because I'd love to have one of the new 16 inch. Because yeah. my old 16 inch, which was from a relic from 2011 yeah. at the stop, mm-hmm. and that just died. So I thought I want I'll get one of the 16 inch. But after when I look for what I want, seven thousand four hundred <laughs> odd dollars in Australian Good dollars, Lord. I said forget. So if I said forget it, I'll, I'll, I'll keep it. I've got another old 15-inch one from 2011. It's still working. And it's ridiculous because I thought, and you've got to upgrade because you can't do things after it. So you think, oh, I better have, oh, I'll only have the one terabyte SSD. Oh, no, I better have the four. <laughs> but then it goes up. And you can't and they have up to an eight, own. I think. Eight, right? Is it eight? Yeah, I didn't yeah. I didn't even want to look at that one because that would go over $10,000, I think. So. Oh. And I thought, that's <clears> ridiculous for a laptop to... <laughs> I said, hey, maybe maybe back 15 years ago it wouldn't be if you had something like that. But in this modern age, and I thought, well, most of the things you want that high performance for, I'll just get another desktop Mac as well and have a cheaper one, just the iPad Pro, because that's getting yeah. quite... <laughs> hey, hey, Dave, are you, the- doing, are you doing Final Cut on that one? Yeah, that's really the only reason I'm stuck on uh, Apple is the, uh, is the Final Cut ecosystem. Um, so... Yeah, that's that's what I added in, and uh, that's you know, that's that's the only reason why I'm on. A I Mac, think there's honestly. a lot of us. Otherwise, so I, I would have switched over. I like I like I like Final Cut on the Mac. It's they did a nice job on it. It's it's getting better too. Every every little fix they make, it's like it's pretty cool. Um, I just got a copy of Filmora. Have you seen that one? It's kind of no, fun. I haven't. It's simple, but it it's by Wondershare, and I think they're in Hong Kong. And it's uh, it's pretty cool. It does a nice job. It's not it's not as nice as Final Cut, but it's a little easier on some stuff. Not they seem to have a semi magnetic timeline, and I think they're all starting to copy that. Even Adobe starting to copy that with I think uh, what is it Rush? Yeah, it's pretty close to a magnetic timeline. Um, if if I think Adobe Resolve is it, where it's at these days, Resolve which one? has gotten Resolve? so fast, yeah. and they're adding so much to it, and a lot of Final yeah. Cut, you know, editing things there too with the magnetic timeline yeah. and obviously you get amazing color you know with it uh, yeah they've just added a bunch of audio features in there too and yeah uh, fair light's okay free. i know it is <laughs> free uh, unless you want something like with h265 then you have to pay 300 bucks we have one pay and one and a whole mess of other non-pay versions but harold's got the pay version because one of our cameras the the canon xf705 a camcorder that shoots in h265 and as a result, nothing nothing decodes H.265. No, Final Cut doesn't. Um, uh, Premiere does. They're all promising to do it, but they don't do it yet. Uh, yeah. It's like the HEF format. H-E-I-F. Well, yeah, and like what Dave got there, you know, if you got a Blackmagic camera, it's putting out the uh, Blackmagic rod. Right. You got to use... <laughs> 
<laughs> I've just yeah. shot a video on this today, so that's why I have it. <laughs> but which one? Which but yeah, one is that one? The cool, the cool thing about these cameras is, uh, uh, if you buy it, you get a full copy of Resolve I know. with the which, camera. So which one's that you, one that you have? Is that one the six? This is the uh, this is the six K. The six K. Yeah. How do you like yeah. it? Uh, it's amazing. I mean, the image is amazing uh, when you shoot six K raw. Uh, but if you don't need six K or or you don't care about that extra resolution, then I would definitely go with the 4k model which is yeah. half the price um in fact you could you could i was even looking on ebay you could buy a, a 4k black magic pocket now for like 900 dollars oh, used. you know so wow. uh it's incredible and they're shooting raw video and i'm editing raw 6k on my laptop and huh. it's not a problem and i didn't spec it out anywhere near what uh oh. jeff was recommending i, I only spent three thousand dollars on mine hmm. and i'm more than happy with what i have i max out the uh the graphics card and then i'm on the mid-tier i9 processor okay i yeah. did 32 gigs of ram with a one terabyte hard drive and uh it's actually the cheapest um hmm. i know that you're talking about how expensive it is but this is actually the cheapest configuration of a macbook uh pro ever and that, they, and that, about that should give you enough for, normal and that should give you enough for editing hey you know what i got recently i don't know if you ever bought one of these i got the owc uh, what's it called? Um, it uses the MMME cards, the smaller ones. Um, okay. for, it, it gets you get a up little to, travel drive, a, a little travel NAS. Yeah, that thing is awesome. Oh, it's cool. a little. Very you cool. can hear the fans, but they're not that bad. Uh, I have it on the iMac right now, but it is fast. You, you get read and write of just like like any other thing, and and those little um, MME drives are are fast. There, I got the IBM ones. They're like a hundred. Uh, what was it? Hundred and something bucks for a two gigabyte, a two terabyte card. I was going. The price Amazing. is great. So I, I put eight terabytes on it. It's a, it's only about you know like five inches by about two inches. It's not very large. It's not very hot. It just runs and it does a really good job on pushing you know video around. You know I have and I know Jeff has one of these too. We've got those big Drobos that are slow and they're big and clunky and they make noise. And this thing is just like super quiet. You hear the little bit of a fan on it, and that's about it. And nice, they're really nice. If you're on the road a lot, man, that's a that's a gotta have it's because you don't have to take anything heavy. It doesn't weigh a thing. Yeah, hard drives have gotten so cheap. Even SSDs are getting cheaper nowadays. And finally, yeah, it's about time. <laughs> it is about yeah. time. And yet, you know, the NASs are getting cheap. Even Drobos have gotten a little bit cheaper, but. I have an issue with Drobo. I don't like their cases. They're noisy as hell. They constantly vibrate, and the fans break. I had one of them break. The, f the fan broke on it. 600 bucks to replace the case. They won't give you a fan. It's like, you've got to be oh, kidding. Wow. Uh, so at that I guess point, they got to make some money. That, that's <laughs> why I went to OWC instead of a new Drobo. I was just ticked. I said, I want to pay so that what, kind of money. What do you guys think about this camera, the Z6 with the ProRes RAW? Have you guys been keeping up with this? No, no I haven't done much with it. With, that's the Nikon, right? Yeah, yeah, it was the Nikon it Z6. It looks nice. Yeah. Um, full frame, 4K, 10-bit. Uh, or if you do the uh, $200 upgrade, you can shoot 4K, 12-bit huh. ProRes RAW. Wow. With this camera, which costs about $1,700 hmm. brand new. Um, and then an Atomos Ninja, which is yeah. under $1,000. Mm -hmm. So for three grand you're shooting ProRes raw 4k 12 bit isn't that amazing not bad stabilized not bad. sensor full how do, you, how do you like it it's great i have not upgraded to the raw yet but i did have a play with it at ces again um atomos was at the nikon booth and my friend dan chung who uh, works with atomos let me play with his unit and i got to you know look at it look at some of the footage and it's it reminds me of uh, black magic raw it's kind of the same oh, okay. idea huh. it's a uh very easy to use codec. It takes up the exact same file size as a 422 ProRes file, hmm. but you get the flexibility of RAW. So if your exposure is a little off, you can adjust it as if it were a RAW file, nice. like a photo. If your color temperature is off, you can, you know, change your your white balance. Um, it's not as flexible as like RE or uh, Red mm -hmm. kind of a RAW, but it's still way better than nothing. And um, yeah. the fact that you can get it. You know, in a package this small and cheap, again, is just, you know, we can complain about everything, but we're living in a wonderful time for creators. Mm -hmm. And, I, you know, if there's anybody listening to this who's young, who's starting out, who might be discouraged because they don't have 10-bit in their camera, like, 
I was shooting on a camera that did not even, you know, it didn't do anything really. It was just a camcorder and it looked awful. So we are living in a wonderful time uh, for filmmakers. The oh, fact yeah. that I can shoot cinema level quality content for under $3,000 hmm. is yeah. a, a dream. It's a dream. So Hey, have you ever tried? Well, I, here's a question for you. Harold and I over here have been racking our brains with the EOS R. What you see yeah. on your viewfinder what you see on your LCD and what comes out when you take a picture are totally different. What you see, it's <laughs> like, I don't get it. It drives us nuts. And then I haven't noticed so that. Yeah, I, I, don't, put the I don't know. I put the Shinobi on it, you know, the other Atomos, the Shinobi, which is the non recording, yeah. which is basically the ninja without the recorder. And exactly. yeah. that one actually is pretty accurate to what comes out on your pictures. So I was going, yeah. now, why is the HDMI output exactly what we're seeing here, but not, it's like we have a hard time getting the exact number or, you know, settings from the EVF to the LCD to work. You know, right now, I think they're equal, and we're going, that didn't work. So we're trying, we tried different things, and it's really hard to take pictures with that camera. This is for pictures. Video is not as bad, but to figure out what settings are we on? What's it, what are we actually getting here? And then you look at it afterwards and go, oh, man, every shot sucked, but it looked good in the viewfinder. Um, it drives <laughs> I don't know what you're nuts. talking about. All my images look great. So uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, Just switch it to auto everything. Yeah, that's, that's right. <laughs> That'll work. <laughs> no, yeah, so I, you, I haven't had that issue. You uh, haven't maybe, seen it. You know, okay. maybe, you got huh. a, maybe you got a bad panel. I don't maybe, know. maybe. It, I mean, it seems okay, but it's just getting those settings is just not quite. Yeah, we're yeah. not on. I mean, we I don't both like, yeah, tried it. I, I must say, I, I don't like the uh, the handling on that camera. I don't think it's laid out very well. Mm. It's counterintuitive. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's uh, like changing the mode, mode changing the, the mode info button that you have to hit. To I hate things. changing the mode. And, uh, it's like five five buttons to change the mode from video to something else. It's just like, why did they do that? It, it looks like it, they learned their lesson because apparently yeah. the rumors are saying the R5 is going to have that little Gone. switch that we're used to from yep. Canon, the Thank photo you. video yep. switch. Um, they're going to add a joystick mm -hmm. back on there and get rid yep. of the touch strip. Yeah, they were trying to uh, out, out create themselves. And you know. I mean, the thing the thing I think is that it's not the worst thing. But when they've done it better before, it's, mm -hmm. it makes you a little irritated because you think, well, I mean, so, they had the interface kind of simpler, easier to use before, and it, it seems like it's going backwards to have a newer camera that doesn't do that. Yes. Yeah. Well, what a lot of people yeah, I, like, what a lot of like with the Canon is that fact that you go for a new new uh, version of it, but you pretty much know how to operate it. Mm -hmm. Whereas if the staff new things are totally different, people get put off a lot. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that that's that's a big part, I think, of Canon's advantage is that just a lot of people start out with Canon's or uh, at, at least something similar to a Canon and layout and, and interface, and th that's what gets people into the Canon ecosystem. So when uh, for Canon in particular, if they change it up, then it becomes um, more conspicuous, I guess. So yeah, Dave, I like their I just lenses, though. The RF lenses are great. Yeah. It's a new mount, so that, and uh, it's definitely the future for Canon. I think that's another reason why I wouldn't get a 1DX3, is uh, hmm. EF right. mount is dead, in my opinion. It's, Pro it's probably. RF for the future. Yeah. Jeff? I just wanted to know, Dave, when did you change uh, the tracks and become a, uh, you know, a, a rock star doing your, mu your video clips, you know, your, your music? <laughs> <laughs> that was good. Uh, <laughs> Did you guys see that? Uh, gear I did guy see that. Video? That was good. Now that you bring it up, that was fun. I'm a gear was... guy, collect a lot of stuff, guy. Yeah, that was fun. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, uh, my dad's a music producer. I grew up, you know, in Nashville. I think I've talked about that before. And uh, he, I've just been surrounded by music my whole life, and he inspired me to start writing uh, some parodies. And uh, it came very natural for me, which I was surprised by. That was the first song I wrote ever. Uh, and I just I wrote it in like two hours, and uh, it just kind of flowed out of me, and I was really loving it, and I found a, a producer to help me uh, make it. I, I hired a guy named Ruslan in Nashville. He's a big producer in Nashville, um, and he made the whole thing from scratch. That's not just like an instrumental track that I found that was handmade by him. Huh, interesting. Which is cool. a, a little uh, overkill, <laughs> but it made the song better. Um, 
Yeah, and he. Uh, if you haven't seen this video, by the way, if you're listening, go check out Gear Guy, uh, Dave Mays. You can find that on my YouTube we'll, channel. We'll Kino put it Tika. on the. We'll and, put it uh, on the uh, on the a, list below. It's a parody of the the Grammy winning uh, song "Bad Guy" by Billie Eilish. Uh, if you're not from, if you're not familiar with who Billie Eilish is, you're old. Um, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> who's Billie Eilish? <laughs> she, uh, yeah, I mean, she just won like six Grammys, you know, this huh. year. So she's, but she's only 18 years old. Lives wow. here in LA. Her and her brother make everything together <laughs> in uh, in their bedroom, and uh, yeah, pretty cool. Uh, so I'm going to be doing more parodies this year in 2020. Uh, it was a lot of fun. I did another one, uh, a couple months ago when the iPhone came out as well. Um, if you haven't seen that one, it was a parody of old town road, uh, which was another huh. popular song last year. It's called brand new iPhone. And I have, I Justine and Sarah Dietschy featured in that video. Uh, that video was posted on my personal channel, Dave Mays. Um, I was trying to grow both channels at the same time and, make one kind of just about gear and the other one kind of like vlogs and entertainment. Mm-hmm. But now I've, I've just decided to go all in with Kinetika and I'm going to kind of phase out my old channel and just focus on Kinetika. So I might even repost that music video again on. Yeah, you should. Kinetika. I didn't see the it's other not, one. So that'd be yeah, fun to see people it again. Saw it yeah. And I put a lot of work and energy into that one. So um, I might well, reshoot it. Because I think there's a new iPhone SE coming in a month mm-hmm. or two. Yep. Um, so I could time it around that and maybe change a couple of the lyrics here and there to match the new SE. Because the mm. one I did was all about the iPhone 11. So, But anyways, uh, yeah, if you want to see that, you can see it on my personal channel. It's called Brand New iPhone featuring Sarah Dietschy and I, Justine. So, well, you've always been a, a bit of a time. performer. You said you were a magician at one point. You did all sorts of things. Yeah. So is that going to be where you're going? You're going to start performing? Because you have a natural knack for it. Yeah. So. Yeah, I, I always saw myself more as an entertainer than a journalist or, a, you know, reading the news. And uh, just because of the nature of what I do for Kinetika, just doing gear reviews, yeah. I try to just focus on just the gear. And, of course, you know, if you've seen my stuff, I am obviously a gear head mm-hmm. and, a, and a total nerd but um in terms of creative fulfillment as a, like an artist if you will i i still really need to have kind of an outlet to create um things that aren't just reading specs um so by doing a music video every other month or something that gives me something to do on the side that is really creative and then while that's happening i can continue making you know the gear reviews and tutorials and stuff on uh, Kino Tika. So, so, so that said, when's the tour? <laughs> That's <laughs> that is uh, something I've talked about uh, to my wife. I told her I was like, if I can make twelve parodies, then at NAB I could do a show like you could right outside of NAB. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Get all the nerds to come out and sing my. Well, you're uh, you're also uh, weird a pretty. You're a pretty young guy. You're song. not even thirty yet, right? I am turning 30 this year. Oh, August well, congratulations. 14th. But now you're a young guy. You still got a whole mess of years ahead of you to, to delve into all those things. You never know. You could be you become a you could become a star. That'd be okay, fun. This, this, gener- uh, this generation's Weird Al Yankovic. This generation. Oh gosh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in the tech space. Hey, well, in, the, in the tech, in the space, tech yeah. space, yeah. Specific. Uh, I think well, you know, we were playing. We were playing with uh, with a, a kind of a parody song the other day. Do you remember uh, Glenn Campbell? And he had a song called "Rhinestone Cowboy." I like think a so. rhinestone <laughs> cowboy. Da da da. Anyway, we were thinking uh-huh. we were watching the Viking show, and I was going like a runestone Viking, <laughs> going out <laughs> and crushing heads every day and night. Something else. So we were just <laughs> playing with it. But anyway, we may do it. I have a blonde wig I could actually wear and look like a Viking. So we may do that as a fun thing, but we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, That's if, amazing. If Dave hasn't seen your, uh, your no. female in person. No, I did a... Sh- I did a... <laughs> we, we, I had a co-host on a show called Shrek Tech years ago. Her name was Gina Shrek, and she's blonde and very vivacious and just loud and has a good time. And so on the 50th show, I dressed up as Gina Shrek. I was her with the hair and, you know, not quite. Oh, my same. gosh. Yeah. And <laughs> so I, instead of Gina Shrek, I was Gina Shriek. And 
I came from the other side, another f alternate dimension. Yep. And I took yep. out my five inch heels and started talking on the phone. Hello? Hello? Because she's always on her cell phone. It wasn't working. And <laughs> she, she, she couldn't stop crying, watching it and laughing. She goes, Amazing. oh my God, this is horrible. <laughs> so <laughs> it was fun. Probably the last time I wear that wig, but it may come back for that Viking thing. I don't know. We, we may. <laughs> Amazing. Lose all credibility, sure. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we are just about, heck, we were out of time a long time ago, but what the heck. Um, Dave, always a pleasure to see you, and, and we love your shows. You always do a great job on the podcast, and uh, keep oh, it up. You, you do good work, and, and hey, I thought I didn't see the first music video, but I did see the second one. Yeah, you had me going. That was great. It was fun. Thank you. It was fun. Unexpected. Thank you so much. I, the beauty was, was unexpected. And, uh, That's what made it, it even more fun. And if you're watching yeah. this on Go check YouTube, out brand new iPhone. Then uh, yeah. Dave's parody videos are going to be linked below in the description. Cool. Awesome. Thank you. Well, yeah. Well, 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 Thanks for having well, me, guys. Well, well, Got to double the views because I said at the moment it's twenty three thousand views on that, and that's woeful compared to what other rubbish is out there. That's fantastic. that's true. You should have you should have a million views by the end of the month. I reckon that would. That's, that's <laughs> yeah, we're we're all well, the geeks. You. All the geeks should be out there supporting this. No, I'll tell I you the geeks are too. This, yeah, I don't. That I don't know what the. I think it's just going to be consistency on my part. If I just keep cranking these out over the next couple of years, one of them sh should hit. I was I've been talking to Kai W. I'm going to be out in uh, mm. Europe. Mm -hmm uh for photokina and we're gonna do one together so hopefully that'll help cool. uh getting kai in, involved you better hope he may he may knock your ratings down be careful <laughs> i'm just <laughs> come kidding. on kai is awesome i love kai so he's a, he's now permanently in england right yes i, yeah, I actually subscribe i see most of his stuff i don't see all of it but i do see most of it and he's he's still doing pretty good stuff he, some of it's weird but some of it's pretty good um <laughs> <laughs> I, I liked when he was in Hong Kong better because he was, you, I don't know, he was more, he had a staff with him and they just did some yeah. fun stuff together. And I think that was part of the fun. They did some really crazy fun things like when they had the machine gun kind of thing in Hong Kong. That was actually pretty cool. Um, they had that guy who was sort of buff. Yeah. <laughs> it was yep. It was good. Yeah, he had a staff of people, editors, shooters, mm -hmm. you know, now he's just by himself. So yeah. it's hard to do it. And it's I a talked lot to him about getting some people for him and he i don't know he could probably afford some some help i don't know why he doesn't do it but yeah uh i know for me i have to have shooters it's the only way i can get this stuff done so it's a lot of work and, yeah and, you, and you've got kids to boot little ones that's right three months and two years three so. months wow <laughs> yeah anyway well hey glad glad to see you again we look forward to seeing you again and uh keep us posted we'll, we'll keep an eye out for those videos and we'll repost them if we see them so Thank you. Anyway. I appreciate it. Have a good one, Dave. Thanks. See you guys. Bye-bye. Thanks, Dave. Bye. Bye. Bye.